the vision I had would we'd sit down, we'd open our Bible, we would read our passage, I would close the Bible, and then I expected this brilliancy to pour forth for my children. And they looked at me like, great story, Mom. Okay, so this video, it's been a long time coming. I apologize. I was hoping to keep to a schedule of one video per week, but I'll be honest, after my last video that you can see here, there was so much cutting and editing to make that work with the interruptions of the child that I kind of got discouraged. And I ended up making another video after that or before that, I don't remember which one, and I ended up just scrapping that video because it was just too all over the place. <clears throat> but there was, there has been such a big response to these videos that I'm hoping that means that you're still coming back and you're still enjoying these. And um, so here's another video for you. This video is going to be kind of like what the Charlotte Mason method of teaching looks like in our school, especially as we kind of jumped right into that first year. Um, I did do a loosely following of Ambleside Online, and I know I kind of talked about it in, I think I had a six week update and another update homeschool video, and I didn't keep up with those because to be honest, Following Ambleside was not the best fit for me to begin Charlotte Mason. There's a huge love for that, and I do love Ambleside Online. I love Ambleside. I love Simply Charlotte Mason, and um, Charlotte Mason Soiree is another one that I'm really loving. But it was not what I needed to begin with. When I look a lot back in my childhood and what I experienced being homeschooled, my mother would not say, would not have said that she followed Charlotte Mason. She knew a lot about all the methods out there. Okay, if you want any kind of discussion, you want to talk to my mom because she really researched that before there was an internet. Okay, so she read. And she won't say that she did a Charlotte Mason method um, strictly by the book, but I would say that she, we had a Charlotte Mason education. What she's been trying to get through to me and what finally clicked is that education, I started Charlotte Mason, I was looking for quantity, not necessarily quality. And of course we know that to be true for Charlotte Mason, you know, the quality of books, not the quantity, you know, not twaddle. But for me, I kept looking at this list that Ambleside Online was saying, you need to do this. And I kept pushing them at my children to the point that my children shut down. They didn't want to touch, they didn't even want to look at another book. And that was me. That was me um, trying to make that love of learning, that love of good literature grounded into them that I almost lost my children. I should say, I almost lost my children in the sense that they didn't want to look at another book. They just wanted some basicness, um, kind of a Robinson curriculum kind of feeling basicness. And we did that for a bit. We basically said, okay, it's time to settle this aside because we're getting burnt out and we need to get back to basics and then we can start building up again. We have built up again in a different kind of way. Um, if you remember what I said in my very first video, it's linked here. What I said in my first video that drew me to Charlotte Mason was that love of learning and that education was an atmosphere, a home atmosphere. And I was putting too much emphasis on education being in the literature, the living books. There is the, the big things about Charlotte Mason, you know, the twaddle free books, the living books, the um, written narration and oral narration, as well as um, uh, nature studies. There's a huge, that's, that's a huge bulk of 
Charlotte Mason as defined from other things. That, if I could boil it down, would be that, again, I, I've mentioned all that in those videos. If you haven't seen those videos and if you're just coming to this one, you might want to pause it, watch those videos, and then come back. Because I'm going to be kind of building on that. Okay, so I had that in mind, but to go about it was a little bit difficult for me. And again, I, I held on to that Ambleside Online that it's, it's a great layout of what to do, but it was too much for my family and it almost killed the love of learning, which was, you know, the whole basis of me going to Charlotte Mason. That being said, it doesn't mean that I'm about ready to just push it all aside and say, you know what, this method doesn't work for us. No, you have to take the bulk of what she was writing and see what the best fit for your family is because if the home is your atmosphere in life, each home is different. Um, I have five kids, some people have two kids, another people have eight kids, you know, the home is gonna look different for everybody. As well as this, um, father is a FedEx driver, this one's a mechanic, this one is a pastor, this one um, is a computer scientist. Everything is going to look differently, so that living education is going to look different. That being said, for us and for the goals that we have for our family, the layout of Ambleside Online, I had to put aside. And you know what? I I don't regret doing that. I will pick it up. But our family dynamics are a little bit different than, um, than the girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes. You know, that, that ideal. One of the things that really struck me... Um, with the Charlotte Mason method and how I was going about educating was what I wanted it to look like. And this past October, I was reading uh, Anne of Green Gables and not only reading, but I also, after reading it, watched uh, the 1980s Anne of Green Gables version. And we all love Miss Stacy, right? You know, she's the teacher you want your children to to um, be instructed under. We want to be Miss Stacy. When I think of her, I think this is what this is the kind of person Charlotte Mason was. She um, put those kids out there and the hands-on learning and out in the nature, the exercises, is um, those. In the movie, you see these kids pulling down a nest from a tree and they're all examining it and they're drawing and writing out, you know, back in the nature. And then you see her approaching Anne, who is caught, you know, reading a living book, Ben-Hur. I mean, what parent doesn't want their 12-year-old child reading Ben-Hur, right? <clears throat> so she's reading Ben-Hur. Anne is reading Ben-Hur and Miss Stacy gently takes it and is very calm and say, hey, can you stay after class? I would like a few words with you. And then she handles that whole situation beautifully. You know, she's like, I'm giving this back to you, your book that I caught you reading. It's not this, I'm holding this back from you for the rest of the school year until you complete your work. She's like, I want you to read more. Her, her, what she said was, I want you to read more to develop your imagination, just not during during geometry class and I I just kept thinking this is what it this is what it's all about we want those kids to have that love of learning <laughs> but the habit of attention and so it's not it separates it I think from I think it's unschooling where it's child-led learning you know whatever the child uh, wants to learn about that you go into that subject and Miss Stacy was directing, hey, you need to be doing this. And you're going to attain to this high standard. You're going to go to Queens, I think is what it was. You are going to be able to do that. You are smart enough. You can do it. And here's how we're going to get you to do it. Um, but yeah, enjoy these things. Enjoy this book. That's the kind of teacher I want to be. And that's what I envision this 
school being. I'm not going to call them a Stacy class. Charlotte Mason has set out a method and Charlotte Mason has written out these lectures. She has put everything into a viewpoint that I can handle or that I can understand and I can grasp and I can learn from and I can teach from. <clears throat> so call it whatever you want. Um, it's been set in stone as Charlotte Mason. That's what I'm calling it. When I've been reading more and more about the books, like getting back to the sources, which again I talked about, there's different things that I was just like, okay, that is rolled off my shoulder now. The thing that I thought that I had to do to make this perfect, she's saying, this is what, this is the bottom line. This is the core of what you need to be doing. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to put Plutarch in every week. Um, and this was important for me to realize, especially as I'm coming to the end of the school year and kind of looking back, we all do that, right? We kind of think, okay, was this a good school year? If you had asked me six weeks ago, I would have been like, oh, I failed this year. What are you talking about? But in the last couple weeks, I've looked back and I've had conversations with my children and I'm doing a lot with my hands right now because I don't have any knitting, so sorry. I had conversations with my children I got to see different things they were doing. I got to see letters my daughter's was my daughter was writing to her pen pal. We have done a lot. We had a good school year. Why? Because my children love to learn. That was a good school year. The reason Charlotte Mason was against textbooks was that they are dry. You, I don't think you have to have a fiction book for every subject in order to have a Charlotte Mason method. I think more parents follow her ideas than they really um, realize. So what I really, really want to push to you is yeah, we didn't, when I started out, I had this idea that we were going to sit down, you know, we would have our morning basket time, which by the way, I had no idea what that was until YouTube told me. Thank you, YouTube, I, th I think. I don't technically follow it. Anyway, the vision I had when we'd sit down, we'd open our Bible, we would read our passage, I would close the Bible, and then I expected this brilliancy to pour forth for my children. And they looked at me like, great story, Mom. Do you think this person should have done that? And I don't understand what my issue was because that's what we've always done. That's what it's been for years. Why did I wake up and assume that we were going to have this philo philosophical conversation day one, okay? That's what I would caution against. And I think... Realistically, we have that knowledge. Practically, I think we still expect that we still measure everything up to smarts. How smart is this child? We'll be able to tell by written narration. <clears throat> Back at it with the kid. Here you go. Okay, so we, we did that and then <clears throat> the kids would go into... <coughs> Excuse me. The hardest subject of the day, which, you know, you get that done and you get it out, which is math. It's not really the hardest subject of the day, but it's very tactical. Um, the handwriting, you know, I had handwriting workbooks, and now what I've been doing is actually I'm having them do something that my mom did, and that just so Trish recently um, talked about in a video, and I was like, hey, that's actually perfect. That's what we're going to do. And we're writing Bible passages. That's where we've gotten with handwriting. And it has to be, you know, kind of along the lines of perfect Perfect practice makes perfect. It needs to be well done. <clears throat> and if it's not, then you have to do it over again. And so far, we've had really good success. Everything that I wanted it to turn out to be, it's not looking like I assumed it would, it would look like. There are things that I really wanted to do that we haven't done. Um, for nature walks, it hasn't happened. Um, 
I married a mechanic and he's very cautious about driving in a vehicle <clears throat> but I've also married a mechanic which means everybody and their brother needs his expertise right I don't have weekends he doesn't get a weekend off what so that being said I don't really have a situation where I can be like hey I'm gonna drive 30 miles away to go look at this uh, because my husband would be like well I need to check this and I need to check this and I need to check this and I don't have time to do that right now that's kind of my situation and so we go to the park you know our nature walks our nature studies are just the park and being out there and we'll hear a bird and we'll be like oh it's this kind of bird or we will see a tree and I'll be like oh wait a minute didn't we just see this in this book it's that kind of tree it's not the <clears throat> going into a meadow and finding a unique flower and taking it home and then drawing it and then writing everything out um, sometimes our nature studies are on those little 8 by 11 posters that I shared with you guys a few weeks ago you know it's it's not it's definitely not at all what I envisioned when somebody says nature walks or nature study um I don't really like our nature I don't like the <coughs> desert but I grew up in it it didn't kill me it won't kill me and there is a lot to learn out here I just would like to learn it behind closed doors scorpions anybody I'm gonna have to wrap this up this video basically is just letting you all know here's what we experienced our first year um, it's a first year it's not gonna be exactly what I expected it to be it's also um, a learning curve so I can go into another year and say okay here's what we did here's what I want to change and this is what I would like it to look like so I think in the end you know like I said we had a great year everybody loves learning that's the whole point of this did I raise the next Albert Einstein I don't think so do I have the next um, George Washington Carver? No. Um, we still have spelling errors. We still have grammar errors. And I don't have docile little children that walk in two straight lines on the way to the dinner table. But that's not what it is. It is pausing in the moments to uh, listen to your daughter say as she's rushing out hey look what I just read about so-and-so and doing what and it's your eight-year-old son running in and saying mommy what is DJ I don't understand why did Hitler do all these things it is <clears throat> it is watching all four he's not ready yet he's wa it's watching all four of your children dressing up as King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and going and reenacting what you just learned in history. It is your daughter coming in and being like, I get it. You know, I understand why three groups of seven equals 21 now. Those moments is a living education. It is not the check boxes that you've accomplished today's work. It is the day-to-day -day life that everything that you're teaching is now being seen in their play, in their life, in their letters to one another, in their conversations to one another, and that's, that's why I like Charlotte Mason. That's why I really, um, well that and I'm a bookaholic, and she encourages that. Well, it's not to love at that point. But, and I'm croaking because <clears throat> I'm just getting over a cold. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It's also those moments where the kids go to the library and are like, oh, we just learned about this in school. What else is there to know on this? And they're taking all these books. Um, like Beowulf. Remember my son on Instagram? He was obsessed with finding a copy of Beowulf so he could get the full story of Grendel. Those are the moments that we say, this has worked, we had a successful school year, my kids know how to learn for themselves. Because that's what they're going to have to do for the rest of their life. We have incorporated a 
education is an atmosphere, is a life. They can, they ought, they will. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm going to have to end it here. And I hope this was helpful and um, inspiring. If you are looking into doing a Charlotte Mason education and you have specific questions, please leave them. Okay, that's going to be it for me from this video. The battery died. I hope I got, I hope I was able to finish up that thought. Um, if you have any questions for me, please leave them down below, especially if you um, are looking more into Charlotte Mason and have questions. I would love to try to either give you the answers, find the answers, um, and learn for myself. Okay, uh, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you um, found it helpful. This really does help me. And um, if you have any suggestions, again, leave them in the comments below. I love reading all of your comments. And until next time, bye.